appreciate everyone's spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us in unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation. We welcome our divine inheritance as creators. We come from love, as love, to be love. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit, and so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space and pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. If there's anything in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see a chaplain following today's service at the front of the sanctuary. Today, it'll be Karen Langsford. Let's join Holly in singing, I Start My Day. Oh, I caught her unaware. <laughs> Let's join Holly in singing, I Start My Day. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. All right, so this is a call and response song, but you can sing all the way if you know it. I start my day with love. When I start my day with love, that's what I get. My love is love. I start my day with love, when I start my day with love, that's what I get for love, is love. Love, 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 love. I start my day with peace, when I start my day with peace, I feel the sweet release of peace. I start my day with peace, when I feel the day with peace, I feel the sweet release of peace. Peace, 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 peace. And greet our neighbors. I start my day with joy when I start my day with joy. Everything I do is infused with joy. I start my day with joy when I start my day with joy. Everything I do is infused with joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, 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 joy. I start my day with love, I start my day with peace. I 
I start my day with love and I feel the sweet release. I start my day with love, I start my day with peace. I start my day with joy, I feel the sweet release of peace, peace, peace. Let's affirm together Unity's founding principle. All right. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And next, our Unity of Lawrence vision statement. United in love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And last, our Unity of Lawrence mission statement. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. Well, lucky me, I get the joy of introducing Kelly Hunt, singer, songwriter, yeah! What a blessing to us all. Kelly is a singer, songwriter, recording artist, speaker, workshop facilitator, and human being extraordinaire based in Lawrence, Kansas. She is currently finishing her first holiday album, Winter Solstice, and that's expected to be released this October. Welcome, Kelly. Thanks, everybody. It's great to be home. I haven't been here for a while, so so nice to be here. Love is but a song we sing. Fears the way we die. You can make the mountains rain, make the angels cry. Though the bird is on the wing, you may not know why. Come on, people, now. Smile on your brother, everybody get together, try to love one another right now, right now, some may come and some may go. that left us here returns for us at last we are but moments sunlight fading in the grass come on people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together and try to love one another right now. Right now. If you hear the song I sing. Understand. Listen, you hold the key to love or fear, it's all in your treasure. 
trembling hand Just one key unlocks them both And it's there at your command Right there goes Come on people now Smile on your sister and brother, everybody get together. Come on, love one another right now. Come on, people now. Smile on your sister and brother, everybody get together. Try to love. You gotta love, love. I remember hearing that song when I think I must have been in grade school maybe and I have an older brother and sister along with a younger sister and so fortunately for me there were lots of cool records going on and in the house and my parents listened to and still listen to my dad's gonna be 95 in a couple weeks my mom's gonna be 93 in November and they still uh, have music going in the house almost all the time which is way cool for me and uh, I was just there last week for a couple of days, and um, we were talking about uh, there's a I have a new album that's coming out, and we it's not in our hands yet, but we, we burned a little CD for them, and we put it on. And you know, I don't expect my family and all my friends to always dig everything I do. You know, I know they're supportive and they love me, but they sat there and they listened to the whole thing and they didn't say anything. They, really listened. When it was done, my mom looked at me and she said, well, if somebody didn't like that, they're crazy. <laughs> so I said, thanks, mom. <laughs> you know, that's love, y'all. That's what I can say. I, I appreciate that so much. So I want to start today with a story. And today is all about peace. There once lived a king who announced a prize for the artist who would paint the best painting depicting peace. Many great painters sent the king several of their best art pieces, and one of the pictures among the various masterpieces was of a calm lake perfectly mirroring peacefully towering snow-capped mountains. Lynette and I today were just talking about the mountains of Colorado and how beautiful they are. So this picture was perfect. Most of the people who looked at the picture of peace from various artists thought that this one was the best of them all. And it was probably going to win that prize. But when the king announced the winner, everybody was shocked. They couldn't believe it. The picture that won the prize, it also had mountains in it, but it was rugged and bare, and the sky looked very angry. There was lightning. This didn't look peaceful at all. It looked like the artist had made a mistake by submitting the painting depicting a storm rather than peace. What's up with that, they thought. But if anyone looked closely at the painting, they could see a tiny bush growing in the cracks in a rock. And in that bush, a mother bird had built her nest. 
in the midst of the rush of angry weather, that bird sat on her nest with peace and determination. Peace doesn't mean to be in a place where there's no noise, no trouble, no lightning, nor storm coming in. Peace means to be in the midst of all that chaos and still be calm in your heart. The real peace is the state of mind, not the state of surroundings. It's taken me a long time to get that. It's not always easy to do. The mother bird was calm despite her chaotic surroundings. And that was indeed the best representation of peace. Because look, you guys, we're human beings. We have that divine spark within us. We come from the divine. We are the vessel for the divine. But hey, we're still in these human bodies. And when we're in the middle of a big storm in our life, no matter what that storm is, it's not always easy as a human being to say, in the midst of this chaos, I'm going to have peace in my heart, damn. You know what I mean? <laughs> Have you been there? <laughs> Starting of March 2020, there rolled in a storm like nobody in our world had experienced quite like before. And there were moments during that that I was wondering, how will I ever feel peaceful again. How's that going to happen? And something interesting happened for me, and I think for lots of others. What brought us not necessarily calm all the time, I was pretty revved up there for quite a while, getting up early, waking up in the middle of the night, going to the grocery store at 6.30 a.m., which is, I am not a morning person, you know. But something happened. It was other people, I found, that helped me regain my footing. I felt kind of like I was on, I was surfing. I'm not a great surfer. I've tried it, but I can sit on the board. But I felt like I was doing this. It was hard to find my footing. Oh, I, about four or five years ago, there was an earthquake that we felt here in Lawrence. And I woke up, I think we woke up around 7 or 7.30, and, you know, our bedroom was doing this, and I was dreaming. I was thinking, wow, this is great. And then I woke up, and I went, oh, no, what is this? I had never been through an earthquake, and I couldn't for the life of me feel like I was safe. I was grounded, and the last thing I was feeling for those couple minutes, and it didn't last long, was peaceful. But here's what helped me find that footing, other people other people. And when we couldn't see each other in person, we could do it via Zoom. We could do it on FaceTime, Google Duo. We could call on the phone. It was hard. But I gradually realized, hey, I'm not in this by myself. Um, I'm okay. And there are others experiencing the same thing. And sometimes just knowing that others are going through something similar and maybe feeling the way that you do can bring us a sense of unity or unification and a, a better sense of peace in knowing that we, guess what, are not alone. There was a woman many years ago that my friend Marsha Paladin turned me on to who was called the Peace Pilgrim. Anybody rem remember her? Yes. And she, from 1953, get this, you guys, until 1981. 1953 till 1981. She walked all across this country. She walked for 25,000 doggone miles, wearing a blue tunic and carrying just a few worldly possessions in her pockets. There she is now. Ringing that bell a piece. Thank you. 
And she shared a simple but profound message in thousands of communities across this country. Quote, she said, when enough of us find inner peace, our institutions will become peaceful and there will be no more occasion for war. And that wasn't necessarily a popular thing back then. And, it, and a lot of people weren't saying the idea of inner peace to help bring about outer peace. So today, her words still ring true. We're still talking about that peace program. And she, has, she had books and there's videos and other media. There's a website called peacepilgrim.org. And I think she's still teaching us today and I one of the most important messages I believe that she gave was the just the concept of inner peace and isn't that doesn't that remind you of the unity principles the five principles which are strong and powerful and those started way back when I was at unity temple on the plaza last week and they they showed a, vis, a video during the service that talked about the origin of the building itself and how long ago this started. And the Fillmores, talk about a strong will, an incredible will. Um, they were at the helm of that, as we know. And they're still serving us today in, in new thought. I find it interesting we call it new thought. It's been around forever. But it can still feel new at all times. I know it does for me. I have so much to learn about all of that. Just doing the best I can, trying to be peaceful and in the midst of chaos. Thich Nhat Hanh is somebody a bunch of us have heard of. Dr. Martin Luther King called him an apostle for peace and nonviolence when he nominated him for a Nobel Peace Prize. Can you imagine this happening to this monk who had been a Vietnamese monk for many years, and he was banned, a Buddhist monk, banned from his country for his ideas, for promoting peace. He was banned. He couldn't go home. And so he eventually moved to France. He traveled all over the world. He's written so many books, including Peace is Every Step. That's one of my favorite little books. When I was given that, again, by my friend Marcia, um, she kind of slipped it into me. You know, she said, oh, you might enjoy this. You can keep it if you want. And this was many years ago. And I read it and I thought, oh, this is a simple, nice little book. It's not very long. And I love the little drawings that he did and the concept. And then I found myself, as I grew and I evolved, which heaven knows I'm still doing and will hopefully do the rest of my life, I went back to that little book. And there were some powerful simple messages in there. Peace is every step. Talk about mindful. Holy smokes, man. Have you ever been going through the grocery store and you got your cart and you got your list and you're like, I'm going to get in, I'm going to get out. You know, <laughs> oh, mm, ah. you timed it, you're ready to rock. Now, if Thich Nhat Han were shopping, It would be a slower process. Peace is every step. He'd say, let your feet kiss the earth. And I'm saying, okay. I have to slow myself down a little bit. But I don't really believe that it's always about being slow. I just think it's about having the idea and the concept and the mindfulness in the moment. Have you ever been in the middle of just something that seems every day, the everydayness of life, and suddenly there's something that catches your spirit, and you think, oh, and you look around for a minute, and you think, how lucky am I? I thought that this morning when I walked in. I haven't been here for, you know, a lot, what feels like a very long time. And I started coming here I think 2003 maybe, I can't remember the year. And I just remember thinking if I just slowed down for a minute 
and take a breath and soak this in because I don't know if I'll ever get to be here again. I hope that I do. I plan on it. That's my intention. But I don't know that. What I do know is right now in this moment, I can breathe comfortably. I'm thanking God for that. I can, I'm well physically. I feel good. I can play music, which is one of my greatest loves, and be with people who mean so much to me in a place that feels like home. There's one peaceful step right there. And it felt good. It still does. I'm very aware that um, the responsibility and the honor that it is to be asked to speak to a group of people, no matter where I am, uh, what I'm doing. And I take that very, very seriously. And I hope that someday, many, many years from now, if I'm lucky enough to live a very long life, I'll look back on this and think, wow, I got to do that. And I want it to be something that I'm proud of. I want it to be something that I was present for, that I didn't just rush through, that I took that one peaceful step and said, oh, here I am. I get to be home with you. There are many ways that we can experience the sensation of peacefulness in the outer world as well. Sometimes, and it's not here yet, but it will be when we see a snowfall, and right after that, when everything is still, you know how it, it mutes the sound. There's no traffic. There's nobody outside yet. Even the birds are quiet. That peaceful, quiet snowfall. And we're not worried yet about driving or how we're going to get to where or how cold it might be. But there is a moment we get to take another peaceful step into that. Because of our physical world, what's going on outside? An example of that in my life is the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. It's a part of my, the fabric of my history, of my growing up, of my family, my family's history. My Aunt Toby, who's, whose given name was Margaret, but for some reason she gravitated to the name Toby or Tobe. I didn't know her name was Margaret when I was a little kid. I didn't find that out till later. I said, Margaret, who's that? And Aunt Toby had a, a beautiful old blonde colored spinet piano. And she could, you know, play it. And her favorite song was Let There Be Peace on Earth. And as a little kid, I sang that in the children's choir in the first United Methodist Church of Emporia. And I think there were 12 of us in the choir singing our hearts out. Yes. And the first song that the minister's wife taught us, and she was a pistol boy. She was sassy and fun. And she didn't treat us like little kids, you guys. She came in, she said, our first song we're going to learn is, No Man is an Island. And we didn't know what that meant. We're like, yeah, OK, so no man is actually an island. And then I don't know. And we were excited, but we didn't know what we were singing about. And she knew that, and she, and she was so kind and compassionate. She, ta she told us what it meant, meaning you're not alone. Every, and she, she got so excited when she told us, and she could see our eyes light up and little sparks of recognition like, oh, I get it. I've got it. We're not isolated. We're here for each other. We're in this rock and choir, and we get to sing this song together. And nobody, and this was my favorite part, nobody has to sing it alone. Whew. I didn't want to do that. But I had my friends around me where no man is an island. And we were just marching in singing that song. You know, and I bet the congregation was cracking up. But boy, we were singing it from our heart. She was not laughing at us. She was working with us. And the other song we sang right after that is let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me and that just stuck with me as a little kid so that was aunt toby's favorite song so she had the sheet music to it we'd go over to her house and she always wanted me to sit down and play it and sing it because the woman could play that piano but the singing thing mm. 
she was making a joyful noise. And I loved her for that. It was full out. And so that taught me as a child, do it with your whole soul. Do it all full out. There's no judgment. If you're singing with joy, it's going to sound great. So I'd go over and play it and sing it. And her daughter, she had a daughter and a son. Her one daughter, Sandy, who was, who was quite a bit older than me, who uh, also loved to play piano and sing. And she, she could do some singing. Now about, gosh, three or four years ago, Sandy very suddenly and unexpectedly uh, died. It was quick and unexpected, and it jarred our whole family. Nobody felt peaceful. Nobody felt grounded. Oh, ah. At that point, Toby also had passed several years before. And my, one of my older cousins, Linda, and I went to Sandy's house and it was our job to winterize the home because it was going to sit over the winter and be sold in the spring. And so we did. We did all the winterizing we could do. We made sure everything was in order. And the house was pretty cold. It was about 45 degrees in there. And as we were getting ready to leave, and you know, have you ever been in a situation where you're super emotional, but you just think, I got a job to do. I'm going to get through my job and I'm going to feel this later. And that's how we felt. We need to get this done. We're going to take care of this. And, and by golly, we're going to winterize the house and lock it up tight and leave and feel good knowing we were doing something. And right as we were done, we got ready to walk out and we turned the thermostat to like 50. And we were getting ready to, to leave and I saw Aunt Toby's blonde spinet piano there in the dining room which is where it lived after Toby died. And I thought, oh. I said, I just have to look at it one more time. And I went up to it, and there was sheet music all across the top, because Sandy played, and she, liked, she had a lot of songbooks. And, and on the front, on the top, as if she had just played it, was Let There Be Peace on Earth. I said, well, Linda, I'm going to have to sit down and play it and sing it right now, one more time. Linda was like, okay. So I sat at the piano, and, you know, it was, it was out of tune, but I didn't care. I just played it, and I sang it, and it felt so comforting. And I thought, oh, man, there's a peaceful thread through my family right here, right now. Now, what if I wouldn't have stopped to do that? What if I wouldn't have seen that piano? I would have missed that peaceful step that I chose to take. One more step. And it felt good, and it felt hard. A friend of mine in Topeka, Alice, has written a song called Sorrow Full of Joy. And that's what it felt like. And someday when I'm back here again, I'm going to play that song for you. Sorrowful of joy. Yeah, we were sad we were leaving. We were really sad it was the last time we were going to be in that house. But it felt joyful to connect to that song. And it gave us a sense of peace in our hearts and our spirits. We felt them with us. I felt a whole bunch of my family gathered around that piano who are no longer on the earth, but I feel them with me. And that song brought them right back to me. Let there be peace on earth, and guess what? Let it begin with me, but I have to allow it. I have to notice it and be of the moment and take that step to do it. So there might be something that happens today in your world. It might slip right by you. It might seem super ordinary, or it might not be at all. There might be somebody you see today that you've wanted to see for a while, and you wanted to tell them, oh, I love you, I miss you, how are you? And you may never get to see them again. And you might. We don't know, but guess what? We have a chance today at this moment to take that peaceful step. Jesus the Christ, who is known as a way shower or a teacher, gave us this idea, this consciousness of peace. And the quote is, my, my peace I give unto you. Now that's our choice. We can believe in that teacher or not. But I love the concept of 
my peace I give unto you. And I, I interpret that too to mean you're not alone. You're not here alone. So I think first we have to make peace with ourselves as best as we can as human beings. My grandmother and my Aunt Toby used to say, what blesses one blesses all. And at, when you're a kid, you go, yep, okay, what blesses one blesses all, woohoo. You know, I get it. I didn't get it then. I get it now. What blesses one blesses all. Have you ever been around a person who seems not artificially peaceful, but just peaceful with their situation? They're grounded. They're there. And suddenly you realize your shoulders are up. You're not breathing fully. And you get around them and that energy, your shoulders go down. You go, oh, what blesses one blesses all. So what does peace mean to you? What's it mean to you? I think it can mean lots of different things. Equal rights can bring us peace. Safe shelter. If a person doesn't have a place to go at the end of the day, that's not peaceful. Food for ourselves and for others. You can't think straight when you, when you don't have something to eat. We're in our bodies. We're human. It's one thing to say, oh, peaceful in all, you know, all situations. Well, if you're hungry and you're cold, it's hard to be peaceful. Being heard, it's such a relief for someone to actually listen to you. I know it is for me. When, I'm, when I feel like I'm being heard, Truly at a deep level, not being given advice, not being interrupted, not being told stories about how their thing was like mine, but really being heard, that's a relief. And that brings me a peaceful feeling. Voting rights. If you want to vote and it's been made harder for you to do so, that doesn't feel peaceful at all, does it? No matter how you vote or who you vote for or what your, you know, ideology is safety safety looks different for all of us if we feel safe in a situation yeah there may be a storm happening there may be conflict there might be chaos but if we feel physically mentally and spiritually safe we can get through just about everything, and many of us have. I know many people in this room who have walked through so many fires, and they yet they don't smell like smoke. They've walked through that fire. They kept themselves safe. Martin Luther King said, True peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. True peace. So we're all human, and we're all divine. That's my belief. Romans 12, 18 says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, which I interpret to say, like, hey, we know you're human. Give it a, give it a go. Live at peace with everyone. In other words, do the best you can, you guys. Do the best you can. And it goes on to say, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. It's not what blesses me, blesses me. Nah, it's what blesses one, blesses all. We want to think of the bigger picture. And here's my favorite quote. Desmond Tutu said, if you want peace, don't talk to your friends talk to your enemies oh boy desmond what were you thinking that's ah, that's not easy to do oh i one time was was performing somewhere over the bazillion years that i performed and some guy i tell you guys was coming up in front of the stage and screaming at me and yelling at me trying to get my attention. 
and I could feel the audience was getting a little tenser and people were backing away and I just you know kept barreling through and singing my song and playing and I thought well I'm just gonna X this out and get through this music oh man I did not feel peaceful at all and then I got this weird little signal that told me okay when the song's over here's what you're gonna do I was like no My husband, backing up a little bit, had given me some flowers and I had put them on the stage with me. And they were just really beautiful roses. And I got the signal that said, I feel like sometimes I'm wearing an Al Franken, you know, satellite hat. <laughs> Stuff comes in, you know, intuition, divine guidance, whatever. I'm like, please, not now. I got done with the song and I was got the, the instructions, you're going to take a rose out of that vase, you're going to walk to the end of the stage, you're going to be safe, and you're going to give it to this guy. And you're going to look him right in the eyes. You're going to acknowledge that he's here. And you're not going to be angry or say anything loud, mean, untoward, and you're going to do it. So I did. I just I knew better not to discount these thoughts that come in because when I do that things don't go as well. I thought, child, this is not making any sense. I'm doing it, and I thought, well, okay. So song was over. He's still in front of you know the stage. I took that flower. I took it to the end of the stage, and I leaned down and I did this, and everybody in the room went. <gasps> you could feel the air go right out the roof. It's like, whoa, and I could see my husband get puffed up in his chair. You know, if any of you know Al, my husband slash boyfriend, he is a wonder. He's one of the jo greatest joys of my life. But don't mess with me if he's around. <laughs> you know, not that he would actually physically do anything. But he used to be a football player, if that tells you anything. So I could see him kind of going, oh, no, you don't. And I, and I leaned over and I looked this guy right in the eye and he looked at me and he was shocked. He got my attention and I gave this flower to him and he got teary and he backed away and he left. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do in all situations because it's not. But for whatever reason, it was time for that peace is every step. I took another step and then I took another one and I trusted and I used discernment no doubt but I went ahead and did that he wanted to be seen he needed to be heard I don't know what his situation was I never saw him again but I knew in that moment that was my way to go forward in peace instead of having this guy drug out of the room and everybody being worried and tense fortunately it was a safe thing to do where we put our attention matters where we put our attention matters and when it's time for us to take that step we're going to know it trust that you don't need to question that everybody has that within them you may not have used it in a while, or you may be on the, the you know, Spirit Patrol hotline 24-7. Trust yourself to know. So here's some things to try this week as I wrap up a little bit. Get outside if you can. Get into nature. Stay away from social media and news before you go to bed if you can. Give it a shot. Bring some peace to others, especially when I'm feeling wonky and out of balance and not grounded. If I focus on bringing some peace to somebody else, whatever that looks like for them, I end up feeling the same. Thomas A. Kempis said, find the peace within yourself, and then you can also bring peace to others. So I would also add to that, if you're not finding that peace within yourself, give it a shot anyway. 
Give it a try. Be the peace that you wish to see in the world. So I'm going to end with this today before we go into meditation. This is by Wendell Berry, and I, and I, I know a lot of you know this, but I just love it. It's called The Peace of Wild Things. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's life may be, haven't we been down that road before? I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water. Just imagine that. And the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. Forethought of grief. Have you ever put yourself in the future and said, oh, I know this is coming, it's going to be bad, and it hadn't happened yet, maybe it won't, but I'm going to get worried. Do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting with their light. I love that. We can't see them yet, but guess what? They're there. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and I am free. So I wish you peace. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. So let's get comfortable in our seats. And let's take a deep cleansing breath at our own pace. And exhale. And let's do that one more time. And we relax our shoulders. And we relax our back and all the muscles in our face, we just let that face go slack. And we open our, our jaw and we take a big yawn, great big yawn. Oh, let's do it again and just don't be afraid to make sound. Here we go. Oh. I wish you peace when the cold winds blow, warmed by fire's glow. And I wish you comfort in the lonely times, and arms to hold you when you wake. I wish you hope when things are going bad and kind words when times are sad. I wish you shelter.
when storms are high and your dreams are low I wish you the strength to let love go I, I wish you the strength to let love As we close our eyes, whether we're here in this room or online or here in spirit, we remember that we are not alone. And we see a beautiful, peaceful path before us. Everything that we long to see. It might be the mountains in the distance. It might be the beautiful trees around us that gradually and slowly let go of their leaves. This time of year, without a sound, and we take that step. take another and we look around us and we say thank you and we breathe and we breathe slowly we realize we're all walking each other home one heart at a time one step at a time and gradually we slowly ease ourselves back into the room into this present moment Wherever we are, we know God is, and we know all is well. And just for this moment, we feel peace in our hearts. And we decide when and how to take that next step. And as we open our eyes and we breathe, remember in this day, let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me.
one heart at a time one heart at a time we lift each other up there we go all together we do it one heart at a time oh we lift each other up one vision at a time one vision now one vision at a time we lift each other up other up it just takes one thought at a time one thought one thought at a time we lift each other up oh, 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 oh. one thought at a time oh we lift each other up one heart one heart we do it one heart at a time we lift each other up do you feel it this morning Times. We go one, one. Let's do it three times. One, one, one. Four times. One, 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 one. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Thank you for sharing your light and love with us and the world. Woo! Oh, as our ushers come forward for our time of thanks, I invite you to join me. I don't know what's happening out there. As we hold our gifts to this community, our hands and love in our hearts, let's affirm together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give and all that I receive and so it is as the love offering is collected let's join Holly in singing stand let there be peace I am a stand for peace let there be love I am a stand for love, let there be joy, I am a stand for joy, we are making a new world now. Let there be peace, I am a stand for peace, let there be love, I am a stand for love, let there be joy, I am a stand for joy, we are making a new world now. We are making a new world now. We are making a new world now. As our ushers come forward, here's our prayer of thanks. Please listen. We are grateful and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again. And so it is. Amen. All right. We have some opportunities. A special welcome to our guests today. Thank you for joining us. If you would like more information about the Unity Movement and Unity of Lawrence, so welcome packet in the foyer. And then for all of you, if you look in the seat pocket in front of you, there is a new feedback form. The board would like to know what you liked about the service and how we can improve. So if you would fill those out and drop them off in the office right there by the front door when you're finished. Thank you. The lunch bunch is going to Perkins today, 1711 West 23rd. All are welcome. That's a rowdy, fun crew. And on Sunday mornings each week, you can join us for a time of fellowship at 1030 downstairs for coffee and treats with your Unity community. Our weekly open meditation group meets on Tuesdays at 630 in the sanctuary. Everyone is welcome. And then today, join Pam Grout, 
our very own Pam Grout, Karen Drucker, Greg Tamblin, and Gary Lynn Floyd for the amazingly awesome benefit concert for the 222 Foundation. The concert is today at Unity Temple on the Plaza at 4 p.m. There's a flyer in the foyer, and then there'll be a carpool leaving from our parking lot at 2.30. So you can be there and uh, carpool together. Then you are invited to Pauline Sharp's historical performance of Chief Lucy of the Kaw Indians at 3 p.m. on Sunday, October 2nd here at Unity Lawrence. Admission is free, but an offering will be taken to benefit the Kanza Heritage Society. Sharp is a citizen of the Kaw Nation and serves on the board of the Kanza Heritage Society. She has researched and studied the history history and culture of the Kanza people from whom the state of Kansas took its name. Sharp tells the story of the Kanza or Ka people through the character of her grandmother, Lucy Taia Eads, the first female chief of the Ka nation. And then some save the dates. Chaplain training will with Robin Goff and Karen Langsford will be on October 8th and 9th. There'll be a new member class with Sharon Dwyer on October 16th, 23rd, and 30th after the Sunday service. And then another meditation retreat is scheduled for Saturday, October 22nd. Um, so if you have questions about those upcoming events, Kathy Moreland can answer questions in the front office there. And Kathy, I forgot, I was supposed to wave this. So I'm waving it now. <laughs> That's your feedback form, I was supposed to wave it and I forgot. So, <laughs> um, please join us next Sunday when Karen Langsford brings us the message, The Wise One Knoweth Not, and we'll have special music with Katherine Lorenzen. So now let's sing in our youth. Oh, they're coming. So in the meantime, we're just going to, you know, get up and dance. We're going <laughs> to, I don't know any jokes or anything. Holly. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and stand. All right. I will say one thing. I've been with um, those folks that are going to be at our concert at 4 o'clock today. You don't want to miss it. You are walking in the light, in the light, in the light. You are walking in the light, in the light of God. In the light, in the light, in the light, in the light. In the light, in the light, in the light of God. You are walking in the light, as the light, as the light. You are walking as the light, as the light of God. Uh, thank you. So let us bless our youth now. Congregation, please rise if you're able and prepare to send them your love as we say together. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the divinity in you. And just for Kelly Hunt, because it's one of her favorite songs, let's end with the peace song. <laughs> <laughs>